OK then, so we've created our login form and also our sign up form using inbuilt model forms provided by Django. Now, I'd also like to create a form for adding a new article on this create an awesome new article page. And we're also going to use a model form on this page as well. So we're not going to hard code our HTML to create this form. We'll use a model form. However, because this is our own model, this article right here, it's not built into Django. We have to do one more extra step. We have to create that model form first of all in Django, then render it in the browser because a user is an inbuilt model into Django, whereas an article isn't. OK, so how do we create this model form? Well, first of all, in the articles folder, we need to create a new file called forms.py. And now all of our model forms for this article model right here will go inside this file. So first of all, we need to import a couple of things. So from Django, import forms. So we're importing this idea of forms from Django so that we can create our own model form. And then secondly, from dot, which means the current directory, import models, because we need access to our article model right here. So now we've imported those two things. The way we create a model form is by creating a new class, giving this a name. So create article in our case. And then this inherits from forms, which we just imported right here, dot model form. OK, so we're now creating this class, which is going to represent our form. So in previous tutorials, when we've used built in forms from Django, for example, in the accounts section over here, if we go to views, we used user creation form and authentication form. They were just classes in Python in Django, which we're using, much like we're creating our own right here, create article. OK, so inside this, we need another class called meta. And inside this class is where we define how we want to output our form, which fields do we want to be present and from which model do we want to inherit these fields from. So we're taking the fields from not this one. Let's close, close that. It's inside articles. We're taking our fields from this model right here. OK, so we need to say that first of all, we need to say that the model that we're using is equal to models, which we imported, which is this file dot and then article. That is the model we're using. Now, the fields that we want to oops, we need to go to a new line. The fields that we want to include in this form that we want to output to the browser are from this article model right here. That needs to be a capital. So what fields do we have? Well, if we go to models again, we can see we have the title, a slug, body, date and thumb. Now, the date is automatically added. We don't need to include that as a field for the user to say when they're posting. As soon as they post it, this is automatically added. Right. So it's just these four, the title, the slug, the body and the thumb. They're the fields that I want to output to the browser that a user can enter into. So we want the title, comma. We also want the body, comma, and the slug. And then finally, we want the thumb, which is the picture. So that's a file upload, remember. So that's how simple it is. We've created now our model form. And now we can use this inside our views file. So let's close these down. Inside this views file, when we're using article create down here, we can use this form. But first of all, we need to import it. So up here, let's say from dot, which means current directory, import forms. So we're importing this file right here now where we created our model form. So now we can use it down here. So inside this article create function, which is fired when a user goes to forward slash articles forward slash create, what we want to do is create a new instance of this form. We just created this model form and then send that to the browser so we can render it. So we'll say form is equal to forms, which we just imported dot create article. So there we go. There's our new instance of this form. Then when we render this template article create, we can send that form to it. So start our dictionary, then the key will be form, but you can call this whatever you want. And that will be equal to the form variable we just created right here. So a new instance of this create article form. 
Okay, so now we've sent that to the template, we can go ahead and open up the template for create article or article create. And then inside here, we can output that form. So then underneath the H2, let's do our form tag. And the class will be site form. So we can style this later on. Uh, we'll do the action and the method in a minute. The method will be post, but the action will be something different. Now we can output this form that we've just passed down to the template. Okay, so this right here is the key name right here. So we're outputting that form and all of those fields that we defined in that form right here, the title, the body, the slug and the thumbnail, they'll be output to the browser using the necessary widgets. So input fields or file upload fields, etc. So let's just quickly save this and refresh over here to see what happens. So we see the title, the body, which is a text, uh, text area, the slug, and also this thumbnail one right here. So we can choose a file if we want. That's pretty cool, right? We've done that with minimal effort. So when we're creating these forms, remember, first of all, we need to add in that token. So let's use our template tags and then output CSRF underscore token. So remember, that's a security measure to prevent requests from other websites sending data to our server. So let's save that. Now, also, we need to address this action thing right here. So when we click submit, and in fact, we don't have a submit button at the minute. So let's create that first of all. Input type is submit. We don't need a name property, but we do need a value and that value will be create because we're going to create an article. So when we hit this submit button right here, we're sending data again to articles forward slash create. So the same URL that we type up here for a get request. So the post and get request are going to be the same. So let us put in the URL for that right here for the action. And again, I'm going to use template tags and URL then in single quotes, article or articles create. Remember, I'm getting this from our URLs file. If we go into that down here, the app name is articles, which is why we say articles first of all. Then the name of this thing right here, create, is create. So that's why we put create after the colon. Okay. So now we're sending our data to this URL via a post request. And all this is looking pretty fine. There is one more thing we need to do on this form that we didn't do on the other forms. And that's because we have an input field. What we're doing here is we're uploading a file to the server. And because we're doing this, we need to add on an extra property onto this form tag. And this property is called enc type. So the encryption, uh, encryption type. And we want to set this equal to multipart forward slash form data. So this is for encoding the form data that is uploaded right here. So we need that, otherwise this won't work. Whenever we have an upload field, we always have this thing right here. So let's save that now. That's our template sorted. So now I'd like to go back to the view over here and handle what happens when a user clicks on this submit button because we're making a post request and this uh, function is going to fire again. So like we did in other views in the past, we can check for a post request. And the way we do that is by saying if request dot method is double equal to post in capitals, then we're going to do one thing and then else. If it's not, then we'll do something else. So this must be a get request. So we'll indent that. So if the method is a post request, what do we want to do? Well, we want to take the data that we retrieve from this form right here. So the way we do that is by saying form is equal to forms dot create article and then inside we pass in the request dot post data so this is validating the data that we receive on the request object request dot post and it's validating it against this model form right here much like we did with the user creation form okay so there's one more thing we need to pass in here and that is also request dot files because when we upload files that's the wrong way around request dot files when we upload files 
they don't come along on this post object right here. They come along on a separate object called files on the request object itself. So we need to pass both of those through to validate both of them inside this model form. Okay. And then that instance of the form, whether it's valid or invalid is going to be stored in this variable. So the next thing we want to do is check, is that form valid? Are all the input fields correct? Has the user created this article properly? So we'll say if form dot is underscore valid, then do something. And the thing we want to do is eventually save this form to the database. So we'll just put a little comment right here to tell us to do that for now. So save article to DB. And instead, for now, what we'll do, if everything is valid, is just redirect. So we'll return a redirect. And we need to import that up here next to render for it to work. So a redirect. And we'd like to redirect them to the article listing page. So in here, just pass in articles and then list. That's the name of that URL. OK. So this is all done. So let me run you through it. If we fire a get request to this page right here, articles forward slash create and click enter, then we're going to get this thing right here. And that's because we're creating this instance of the create article form right here, a blank one, right? And we're sending that at the bottom to this template. So that's why we see it in the browser. Now, if we fill this in and click create, then what we're doing is saying, okay, well, when the request comes in, we know it's a post request this time. So we'll pass that data into this instance of the create article form that we uh, that we made and we pass in that data. If the form is valid, then what we'll do is later on save it to the database. If not, then we'll go down here and return this template again and we'll pass through this version of the form that we created with any kind of validation errors so the user knows where it's gone wrong. So let's give this a whirl and We'll first of all try to create and we get some front end validation. So let's just um, create a new title. We'll say, where is Mario? And then in here, blah, blah, blah. The slug can be, where is Mario? And we'll choose a file for this, number two. And let's create this. This should redirect us to forward slash articles, forward slash create. However, models.forms has no that's because I've missed an R out. So it's this thing right here, create article. So let's go back and try that again. Refresh. So where is Mario? Blah, blah. And then where is Mario? Choose a file, number two, create this. And this works. Now it's not created that article. It's just passed the validation. The form is valid. Therefore, we're moving the user on to this article list. Now what we want to do is take that article and then save it to the database. But we'll do that in the next video.